What is going on, beautiful people of planet Earth? I hope you're having an amazing, relaxing Sunday so far. I know I'm trying to. What is Section 230, and what does it mean for the overall population? I know it has become a buzzword over the past couple months, so I'm going to break it down in a quick video trying to explain the significance of it, why it has become an important talking point, an important issue in 2020 and in the future of 2021 and beyond. Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act helped create the modern internet. Now the regulation is at the center of a high stakes political battle that could reshape how we use social media, mobile apps, and the open web. President Donald Trump and some Republicans in Congress have pushed to repeal the law, while big tech CEOs have signaled support for modifying it, although no one can agree on how. And that is the important issue, no one can agree. Here's what you need to know about the controversial law its flaws, and why the prospect of killing it off in a fell swoop worries experts. What is Section 230? Section 230 is part of the Communications Decency Act, a 1996 law, and was part of the Telecommunications Act of the same year that regulated online, let's say, spicy content. Specifically, Section 230 provides legal immunity from liability for internet services and users for content posted on the internet. The regulation states, no provider or user of an interactive computer service shall be treated as the publisher or speaker of any information provided by another information content provider. And that is the controversy around this is that social media sites have in essence become publishers of this content. They no longer just allow content to be freely distributed, they're going in and fact checking what is being posted on their sites, saying this claim is disputed, this tweet, this post is non-factual. Let's refer to an expert that we choose, which makes them a filter of content, a publisher. What that means in practice is that internet companies, everything from social media platforms to online retailers to news sites are generally not liable if a user posts something illegal. Backers of Section 230 credit in part for the success of companies like Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, which depend on vast amounts of user-generated content. It's part of the architecture of the modern internet, said David Green, senior staff attorney and civil liberties director for the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Everything you do online depends on it. Before Section 230 became law, internet services were required to be aware of and responsible for everything on their sites. The existing law could not scale to meet the needs of the internet in 1996 and certainly wouldn't scale today. Again, this law was created in 1996 and none of these social media companies existed until the mid to late 2000s or gained popularity then. Early online forums of the 1990s either had to read everything or had specific legal protection for content or were just responsible for everything on the site. Because it's impossible to read everything, most companies would just opt to take it down, which is what they're doing now. <laughs> just opt to take it down if they don't agree with what you're posting, if they think it's disputed, if it's controversial in any way. But under Section 230, platforms can choose to moderate some of their content without being liable for all of it. And that is what legislators, lawmakers, particularly on the right, are saying that they should be liable for it. They believe they are being singled out because of their political views and leanings. And that is where these companies getting protection under this law gets dangerous. These companies are operating like many governments by saying what you can and cannot say on your, their sites. So what happens when someone tries to sue an internet company, which is what is going on in Poland, they're actually introducing legislatures so that people that are being censored by these social sites can go in and sue these companies. But in America, social media firms have flourished under the regulation because it does not require companies to know about legal or harmful content posted by users. Arguments like, you know there was a problem, you knew there was a problem, or you should have known there was a problem don't work in lawsuits because 
230 simply does not address a defendant's knowledge of illegal content. However, that's only true for civil cases. Section 230 does not protect platforms in criminal cases or in cases involving copyright claims. The Department of Justice also recently proposed legislation that would make it easier for ordinary citizens to sue social media firms. So could social media survive without Section 230? Without it, most experts agree it would be hard for startups and new tech firms to enter the online market because they would face high legal costs and liability risks. And that is a drawback for people saying that we should repeal Section 230 is you're only creating more monopolies or you're only giving the big platforms more market share. If you repealed Section 230, the only platforms available would be sites like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all of these companies would just get emboldened and bigger because of it because they can afford to pay these legal fees that would be coming their way. Green said it creates incentives for people who don't like the speech to just complain about it. It's then much less expensive for an inter intermediary to delete the speech rather than investigate whether the complaint has any merit. Is there a way to compromise? Instead of scrapping 230 entirely, Green thinks Congress could devise a compromise that updates the law while also protecting speech online. Technology built the open internet and regulations like 230 protect it. But a compromise that doesn't shield web users and platforms would fundamentally alter the internet as we know it today. It would have devastating implications for their privacy because it would legally require internet firms to act as gatekeepers and track everything their users post. All this is because of what happened a week ago. Everyone is just being too reactionary right now. Let's repeal Section 230, but that actually goes against what they're trying to do. That essentially gives more power to the government to go in and control what you're saying online. The problem is that's what the social sites are doing right now, so we need a compromise. We need a middle ground. Are there risks to changing Section 230? While flawed, Section 230 has been important for more than two decades, which is why it needs to be updated for the upcoming decade. We shouldn't be using law from three decades ago. <laughs> It has allowed new companies to thrive and lets people express themselves online, supporters say. Altering or removing 230 would likely have unknown and far-reaching consequences. It would be like opening Pandora's box and would be the wild west of the internet. Some people think that's a good thing. Others think that it would be total chaos, which I think it would be kind of total chaos. I believe, and I believe other people think this as well. We just need to have a compromise and an update to Section 230. We do not need to repeal Section 230. The people that say that we need to totally replace or destroy or rescind the law are being very reactionary to what happened a week ago. They just want retaliation for all the accounts that were banned and scrubbed from the internet. They want these social media companies to pay for what they've done. But we need to all just calm down, take a deep breath, and just think rationally. We need to update the law for 2021 and not have a 1996 law dictate what we're doing three decades later. And that is it for today's video. I just wanted to make a quick video on Sunday because this is a hot topic. This is a... This is going to be an ongoing issue for the next decade or more if it doesn't get addressed within the next coming years. If you want to support me on this journey I am taking, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I plan on making videos three to four times a week. Some of it will be like this, newsworthy stuff that's not really covered by the mainstream media and spiritual information. Also, new update, I have created a Teespring site which if people don't know, is a merchandise store. I have a couple t-shirts on there and a couple posters. I will post the link right here. teespring.com slash store slash sensei dash productions dash merch or a link will be in the description below and I will post it on the video. I will be updating the store very frequently. I am getting into graphic I'm getting into graphic design. I like making shirts. I like making posters. Hopefully you guys enjoy them as well. Thank you for watching. You are appreciated. I hope you have a great rest of your Sunday.
and an amazing year in 2021. Namaste.